Shalom everybody, welcome back. We have insights in the Parsha of the week, Parsha Shmini, which deals with the death, the sudden death of Nadav and Avihu, the sons of Aaron and Kohen. <clears throat> the various reasons are given, both in the verses and in the teachings of the sages. The Pasuk says clearly that they offered a foreign fire, Esh Zara. They offered the Ketoret when they were not commanded to do so, and they entered into the Holy of Holies with the Ketoret. Okay? Rashi also brings down that they were not married. Number two, that they were Shtuyayayin, that they drank alcohol, beverage, wine. And number three, also that they ruled the Halacha in front of Moshe Rabbeinu. All four of these reasons are given for why Nadav and Avihu were burnt. Their neshamas were burnt, their bodies were intact, but like two f holy fires, spiritual fires entered their nostrils and burnt the neshama from within, and they laid there dead. Okay? So there's a lot, a lot that Rav Nossin writes about the idea of Nadav and Avihu and its representation. Let's go into these things, number one, step by step. The idea that they weren't married, Rav Nossin explains, the whole idea of marriage is to balance a man. The tendency of every man, the tendency of a person who has knowledge, is to pursue, to advance, to run, to come closer, to learn more, to advance more. Okay? However, Rabbi Nachman teaches Lesson 24, the secret of knowledge is dafka specifically attained by halting by stopping and having the mind settled to have the mind settled requires requires you to take a break and to stop once the mind is settled then it's able to become a vessel to perceive within it the infinite light which is the highest levels of attainable or unattainable wisdom which a person can technically grasp and perceive but if a person's always in running mode to advance and advance so it's very hard for that to happen. So from heaven, a person needs a halt. In marriage, the job of the woman, she's called Eshet Chayil Ateret Bala. It's a verse from Proverbs, Mishlei. Don't get mixed up with the verse Eshet Chayil from Friday night, which is also from Proverbs. But there's another verse which goes, a woman of valor is the crown of her husband. So Rav Nosen points out, crown, Ateret, crown corresponds to the quasi-super- Sphira called Keter, which serves as the interface between mankind and the infinite light. What the Keter does is it pushes back people. It pushes people back whose minds are running to perceive in advance and perceive and perceive. The Keter puts them on a halt in order to have their mind settled. And once the mind is settled, then a person can perceive the infinite light. So the verse is reading, Rav Nassan explains that a, a woman of valor, her job is to put her husband in halt in order that the halt should al allow him to stop, have his mind settled, and by the mind being settled, to yes, perceive a glimpse of the infinite light, a glimpse of what he's running after to perceive. Okay, that's the why it's such a holy role of a wife, of a marriage. And this is what Nadav and Avihu lacked. They were on running mode, on pursuing mode, trying to advance and advance. On one hand, it's good, it's, it's amazing. But it's not complete. The complete level of wisdom is to know that we don't know. The goal of wisdom is to know how much we don't know. That's the goal. In other words, knowing is one thing, but not knowing is a higher level. And when you accept the not knowing, you are ready to reach the higher level, the next level of knowing. And it's never ending. There's knowing, not knowing. Knowing, not knowing. It's endless, endless levels. But always the goal of this present level of knowing that you do no, is to get to the next level. And this is what was lacking with Adav and Avihu. By not being married, they didn't have that haltage that the wife provides. Number two, that the sages say that they came in and they were drunk. Drunk means tipsy. Tipsiness means that the mind is unsettled. And for the mind to perceive the infinite light, it has to be settled. So that the, their minds were in running format, shows, indicates, and they, they didn't have a breakers on their mind, is similar, in this, in the, in the, according to their level, there was a high tzaddikim, obviously, according to their high level, it's considered as if they were drunk. They were shtuyayayin, because the, the imbalancement of a mind when drunk 
is similar to a mind that doesn't have breakers. A mind that's pursuing more Gemara, more Zohar, more Kabbalah, more Torah, more, more, more. But without the haltage, haltage the stopping, the breakers. So in a sense, that, that mind is in danger. It can crash. And that's the idea of a drunken mind. Number three, that they ruled the Halakha in front of the Rav. That's also, who would do that? Who would have the audacity to rule a Halakha in front of the Rebbe? If not someone whose mind also is imbalanced, okay? The imbalance of the mind, person feels, ah, I know that, I know that, it's so clear to me. So they jump in and rule a halacha in front of the Rav, because I know the halacha, it's so clear. But all this is a, is a, is a blemish. It's an imp impairment. It's something wrong, okay? Again, Nadav and Avio were outstanding tzaddikim, and yet the Torah gives them this blame, that they have these blemishes. So says that this concept of being able to take a break in order to have Yeshua Dat is so fine and such a delicate issue that even even the greatest of tzaddikim can fall and blemish from this. Rav Nosson just brings an example from Shimon and Levi, the brothers of Yosef at Tzaddik, and they were for sure outstanding tzaddikim. No one in the world is going to doubt that Shimon and Levi were tzaddikim, and yet they felt that Yosef at Tzaddik had to be killed. He was chayav mita. He deserved, was deserving of the death penalty. What in the world? Great tzaddikim. But they had a blemish, dak mina dak, Rav Nosson says. A very, very refined blemish that distorted their whole perspective and seeing that he's liable death penalty. And then from that emanated the blemish of their two descendants, which Rashi brings down in the blessing or the curse of Yaakov to Shimon and Levi. Right? So he says... I forgot the exact wording, I'm sorry. But he said, regarding what's going to happen with Zimri, who is a descendant of, of Shimon, and what's going to happen with Korach, who is the descendant of Levi, I don't want to be there. I don't want to be involved in their machlok, their strife against Moshe Rabbeinu. And by them, there was a real blemish. Zimri, being a Torah scholar, and yet he wanted to permit immorality in public by being with Kozbi in public. Korach, it was so clear he wanted honor. He was after honor, personal honor. The first says it himself, who are you, Moshe and Aaron, to take, Moshe to take the honor? And then you give the next honor to Aaron. I should be next in line. I'm the son of the next father, the next brother of our Amram, Yitzhar, Uziel. I'm the next in line, a descendant of the next in line. I should be next. You don't do that? Like Rashi says, I'm going to be opposed against you. Okay, there there was clear opposition and it was foolish to call them big tzaddikim. They were Tamid Chacham, they were sages. Korach was a, ta a Torah scholar. Zimri was a Torah scholar. He was a Nasi, he was a prince of the tribe. And yet they blemished also. So Vinosin shows that this blemish, without having a settled mind, is so bad, is so severe, that it has major ramifications in life. That's why a person should strive for Yishuv Hadat, settled mind. But the settling of the mind only comes if you have this balance of running and returning. And that was reflected in what was missing, what was lacking in Nadav and Aviv. Now, more than this, they offered Ktorit. Now, Ktorit, Rabbi Nachman says, is something so big. Ktorit, Yesamach Lev. Ktorit has the power to activate joy. And when joy is activated, that is the prerequisite for having a settled mind. To be able to have the mind settled mean to have the bounces and the breakers and to take it properly, to take the setback and the waiting and the halts in a proper manner, the prerequisite for that is simcha. And Rabbi Nachman teaches the Torah activates that. So you would think, there's a big question here. If Nadav and Aviyu, at the end of the day, they offered Ktorit, they just that they weren't commanded to do so, they weren't obligated at the time, but they offered Ktorot, so we think the Ktorot would protect them from being damaged. But the answer is no. That even the Ktorot has its, has its limitations. Ktorot, when offered at the right time for the right reason, when a person, the Kohen, offers it in the right time, or when we recite it in the right time, which is Shacharit in Mincha, or like doing it, doing, doing the right thing, doing the Ktorot with the right intent to come to joy, okay? then it can activate a positivity and, and open up the door for the infinite light. 
But in the case of Nadav and Aviyu, since they were already not married, and they were only in the pursuit of knowledge, so that shows automatically that they weren't after simcha. They weren't after joy. Because joy is someone who is appreciative of what he has, recognizes his setbacks, and has a major sense of humility. Whereas Nadav and Aviyu, again, these are great tzaddikim, dak min dak, refined of a refined blemish, that they went ahead without permission, showing a type of haughtiness. It's hard to say this about big tzaddikim, but a type of a, a firm a firm attitude, but without submitted, with submission to the command of Moshe Rabbeinu. So that is considered a blemish, and then the ktorat cannot help. Ktorat helps when you're doing it based on the guidelines and instructions of the tzaddikim. When the tzaddikim tell us ktorat is to activate the simcha, which is needed, and you do it out of that, then the Ktorit works. Even today, recitation of the Ktorit. And back then, all the more so in the time of the Beit HaMikdash, when the Kohanim were doing the Ktorit every day in the morning and afternoon, we were doing it because Hashem commanded Moshe that this is what has to be done, period. And not out of their own intention, like was the case of Nadav and Aviyu. With all this, we see that a person needs balance at every stage of life. Okay? It's not easy. Because normally the way of a Jew, especially someone who's doing tshuva or a convert, they see the light, they want to right, run right into it because they were, they're, running, they're fleeing from darkness. It's true, but on the other hand, it's not complete. The completion is having a settled mind. That's the key for perceiving godliness in life. And life itself teaches a person with all the setbacks to keep on waiting and waiting and waiting. And in the meantime, while he's waiting, he builds his mind to be prepared to receive Light from the infinite light shining him clarity and guidance in life. We should be Zoche to learn from Nadav and Aviyu and to be patient and to take things properly. Also, to value the idea of marriage, what marriage offers is that the wife's job is to put the breakers on the husband and also the, da- the danger of drinking. <laughs> Rabbi Nachman was very against drinking. He, the only that time of the year that he g- gave full force, a full green light, was on Purim. And we have the four cups, of course, of Pesach, and we have Kiddush and Havdalah. But other than that, very against optional drinking just to be in a married mood. And the idea of intoxication in order to advance to a high level of happiness and, and freedom, he wasn't so pl- for that. He was more for that a person with his own efforts build to get that attitude and work on it, using the advice that he gave to be happy with Hashem. We should learn from all this and... We should visit Hashem, take it easy, and advance with caution. Shabbat Shalom Umvorach.